shipping containers. Definitely not everyone's cup of tea, but for me, one of my favorite jobs. This video will be mostly about containers, so if you're a new driver and you're about to start your journey into this industry, well, stick around and consider subscribing. So throughout this video, I'm gonna try to explain the good parts and the bad parts about container deliveries or container haulage or whatever you wanna call it. But I'm not gonna tell you which one's good, which one's bad. That one, I'm gonna have to leave you decide if it's good or if it's bad for you. I've been doing absolutely nothing today, just wasting time because I was at this loading place. I've got an empty container from nine o'clock this morning and it's now one o'clock. So that is a lot of time, a lot of wasted time, but it's not your problem. Usually the companies are getting paid after three hours of waiting time. Um, they can pull you out, they will get paid, and that's that. Another thing, at this job, it is a lot, a lot of sitting around. If you will have a container for, let's say, coming in from China with a million tiny boxes which are not on pallets those containers can take three four five six eight hours I think my lo my longest tip was eight hours seven and a half hours to be more exact so seven and a half hours just waiting to get unloaded because there are so many boxes in a 40 or a 45 foot container which are really small boxes and all of them have to be tipped by hand so it's a lot a lot of work so if you like to sit around do nothing well might be good for you but remember that in some places you can end up and not having any food any water supplies or stuff like that so you have to be prepared always pack a lunch with you always have water always have whatever you need but just be, be, be prepared to sit around for hours and hours now for me personally i've always been a big fan of containers i don't know why to be honest but I think maybe it has to do with the fact that I've started my career as a truck driver on containers. My first job, they're gonna let me in. Yeah. My first job when I started uh, driving trucks was on containers. I, would do, I was doing. Um, my headquarters were in uh, in Denmark and I was shipping containers between Germany and Denmark getting the uh, the containers out from Hamburg from Hamburg port which is I think one of the the Europe uh, biggest ports it's just uh, I, I can't remember like right now but I think it changed so much it was so complicated for me um, but Luckily, I had, the, um, uh, had a guy with tons of experience, so he teach me a lot of stuff. I was, uh, I was with, the, with this guy for, I think, about two or three weeks. And uh, I was all over the place with him. 
um, we were we were tramping back then but tramping in a way like uh, we used to stay for for three months in a row in the truck um, we went to Denmark pick up our trucks then stayed uh, for three months then fly back home or drive back home or whatever you want to do it was tough it was really really tough being uh, being away from the family for for so such a long time but luckily back then I didn't have any family I mean I didn't have my kid I still have the uh, the same girlfriend <laughs> but uh, I was I was a bit younger it was 2012 or 13 if I'm not wrong something like that anyway so yeah, we used to um, pull containers out of uh, Hamburg dock in Germany and bring them um, either up in, uh, in Denmark or Germany or uh, France or Belgium, Netherlands, Sweden, all, all over the place. And um, once I get my own truck, not my own truck, I mean, I was alone in my in another truck not with this guy anymore so he told me the most important thing like the most important thing you cannot miss that is you have to to, to uh, pass through customs to make a t1 or a three or a t3 i can't remember which one but anyway as you were going into uh, into denmark right at the border there was like a big custom place so you had to head to head to the offices with paperwork. They will just put a stamp on your paperwork and off you go. Now remember, if you didn't do this, the fine was 50,000 euros per containers. And guess what? Oh yeah, I forgot. I mean, I don't know if I forgot or what the hell happened, but I didn't go through, through customs with three containers. <laughs> oh funny times so they uh, they called me from uh, from the transport office said look uh, you haven't put the stamps on this um, on this paperwork do you have like any other paperwork or and I just like I think I blacked out for a second I was white I was as white as snow white and it just hit me fucking hell I forgot to to, to go through customs with the containers so anyway, they called me back, they gave me the paperwork and said, look, I don't know how you're gonna do it, but you have to go back through the, um, to the offices again and, I don't know, change uh, clothes, uh, wear a hat, every time, because you, you can't just go with all the paperwork at once, because they will know that it's, it, it's just, you're just trying to, um, to get stamps without having the containers which is wrong which is like i mean <laughs> you're possible of, of of getting fines so i was like okay no worries i'm gonna try and do this and it was a, a very cute lady i will never forget her so um first i i think i went in a red t-shirt or something like that uh, he put a stamp on it an hour later i came back with a different change of uh, set of clothes he looked at me, she smiled, she put the stamp. And then I came back in about two hours and there was another guy at the office and that guy as well put the stamp on the paperwork. So it saved me, how much was it? 150,000 euro fine. I mean, those fines will, will end up at the company and not, not funny having 150,000 uh, euros fine for uh, for uh, from an idiot driver just because I forgot to um, to put uh, the stamps and uh, do the customs so anyway yeah that's that that's my that's my story I think I'm attracted to to containers because that was my first job and I really like being around the sea and uh, around big ships and container terminals I don't know is like something special around that you know it's not not boring I'm, I'm it's fun to be around huge machinery I just love it if 
first time I pulled containers in the UK, uh, actually I was at Stobart and the trainer there told me as you're gonna do this job often and often and more and more the easier the easier it will be so uh, I'm not gonna go into all the technical stuff about how you're gonna hook on a container or how you're gonna shorten or elongate a, a, a trailer I'm gonna link I'm gonna link the video somewhere over here on the on the top screen but he told me that the more you do this job, the easier it's gonna be. The only thing is with this con with these container jobs, is that you have to learn your way through the docks or in the ports. Now I haven't been to all ports in the UK. I only been in I think three or four or five of them. And every everywhere you go, they have different rules. Um, you have to be very careful. At some of them, they will provide training. When you first get there because it's a lot of information to go through every port every dock in the uk at least requires a driver card now some ports are charging for it like the seaford dock here in liverpool i think they are charging 35 or 30 pounds for this driver id card um, and I think it expires in three or four years I'm not sure anyway my my card here it's expired but it's still working so I wouldn't be bothered to uh, to go in the office and tell them I need to um, I need to refresh it because I just don't want to pay that 35 pounds which at some companies yes you will have to pay for them especially if you're an agency driver like I am they will not pay for your driver's card so what I'm doing now is I'm lifting off this container and I'm taking another smaller one and take that one to load because uh, this job got cancelled so better luck next time all you have to do four twist locks that easy now we're done This is a place in Liverpool where they just store empty containers They just end up here Getting cleaned, getting repaired And then shipped back out so These are all empties We are in Manchester We're heading over to Trafford Park Not the football stadium, just the industrial estate But I can feel it I can feel it, we are close to Ronaldo He's probably saying Fucking hell, these truck drivers Almost earning as much as me Fucking bastards One more thing I would like to discuss with you Is agency life I've been with agencies for God knows how many years and I'm still agency and I will continue to be agency 
One of the reasons for that is that I can make my own schedule and I can have as much flexibility as I want to. But there are times when, just like a couple of minutes ago, I get a phone call saying they're cancelled for tomorrow. But usually I do mind it and it is a bit of a problem, but not all the times. And not today, and uh, there are those days when they call you and I just feel like a kid who has cancelled school for tomorrow and I'm free. So they call me saying, look mate, we're really sorry, they cancelled you for tomorrow. And I was like, fuck yeah! <laughs> but actually I told them, oh fucking hell, I thought this was ongoing. I'm gonna look for something else, mate, because I, I, I can't do it like this, you know? And they were like, well, don't worry, we'll find something else. And I was like, no, 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 no. Forget about it. Taking a day off and we'll see what's gonna happen. But I don't mind working less this week. So that's definitely something you will have to consider when you're gonna sign up with agencies. You're gonna get cancelled. Sometimes, not all the times, but you will. So it is Thursday today. Thursday morning. Back on containers. I mean the Vo the Queen Volvo today. Very happy about that. So it's my third and last day of work this week and I have to tell you I'm really enjoying this three week work. I've got plenty of time to miss the trucks but also plenty of time to stay with the family have a few a few celebrations this weekend my son is turning five so I'm having tomorrow off as well to do all the uh, preparations for for Saturday so I'm gonna take it I'm gonna be taking it easy this uh, this week Got a 20 foot box behind me and I'm going to load it and then probably go to the docks or put it on the rails in Garston, Liverpool. I haven't drove one of these Volvos for a long long time now, I almost forgot how good they are. It's a real contestant, a real competitor to the Scania's. Fantastic trucks, so smooth, gearbox, spot on, plenty of power, beautiful machines. I honestly have a, have a theory regarding the, uh, the bad trucks of the world, you know. I don't know if you ever, if you ever drove one of those Renault Premiums, so not the, it's the one after Magnum, I think they uh, they came up with the Renault Premium and then the uh, Renault T is the last one I believe or something like that But those trucks, I don't know, but it should be illegal. I wish there was like this organization which Are telling manufacturers look you've got Scania's and Volvo's those two are your model if you want to build better trucks than them or similar that's fine you can do it but if you want to do something stupid like a Renault you should be banned you should be not allowed to go on the road with them stupid trucks stretch this container oh fuck you know I've got a flat tire oh fuck you Shit.
It's definitely fat. I don't know if you can see it now, but it's almost almost all the airs out. Strange because I don't see anything in it, but maybe because the uh, this heavy container was so much on the back, maybe the air got out somehow. Just let the air out, and now we have to wait for recovery. Right, back on the road. I just finished um, changing that that tire, the tire man, not me, of course. Don't know what was wrong with it because uh, we haven't found any nails or anything in it so it's probably just uh, was a bit of an older tire although the tread was great but maybe the problem with this uh, 20 foot box is once they're getting loaded and it is so much pressure on the rear tires when the box is at the end it just puts an immense a lot of pressure on them and if they are not in sound condition I think they just uh, they just give and uh, and that's it so yeah I lost a good uh, two hours there uh, but we'll probably have another job to do today more 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 than likely so we are heading to the rail terminal now get this box off and I'm going then to pick up another empty box and uh, probably get that loaded right so this is the uh, rail terminal pretty easy all I have to do is drive to the second crane and they'll lift off the box and probably put it straight on the rails Crazy. We now switched to the even more wider GoPro Max. Let me know what you think. Let me know if it's uh, cooler like this or narrow it down a bit with the uh, regular GoPro. So anyway, let's talk wages because in the previous video, I might not be um, as clear as I wished. Okay, now look at this garbage flying out of this of this rub rubbish truck. So yeah, let's talk wages. Now um, I know I've said that some people do this job for 10 pounds an hour but i did not say that i do it now what i wanted to say is that there are still jobs on indeed or read or whatever offering 10 pounds an hour um, wages in liverpool at the moment are I would say between 15 and 20 pounds an hour per day and i'm I would say somewhere in the middle with uh, 17 pounds an hour which is not good not great but uh, Liverpool I mean this area is known uh, for average wages it's nothing compared to London or um, or Birmingham or other areas 
I mean that's that's the wages around here and I'm happy with it so yeah that's the wages uh, I did say that people still do it or, or don't want to do it for 10 pounds an hour because but the, the reality is there are still people who are taking uh, jobs for 10 pounds an hour I'm not saying it, they are Romanians or English or whatever don't need to discriminate but there are <laughs> quite a bunch of them who still do it so these are these are the wages at the moment um, while I was on vacation I I think I hit, I still have the text maybe I'll pop it here on the screen somewhere I think they were offering 400 and something pounds per shift now that was a job uh, somewhere in, uh, in North London but at 450 pounds a shift fucking hell I thought to myself I'm gonna rent a camper van for a hundred quid a day and live in that camper van for a couple of months till the uh, the uh, the contract is still running because it was something like a month or two I even phoned them um, and it was uh, I think an XPO job but they were doing store deliveries now I'm not sure for who either for but I don't think for b and M. I I don't think they will pay that much I don't know maybe Dunelm or I don't know got no idea but anyway I phoned them when I was um, when I was back in uh, in the UK and um, the job was gone um, uh, I'm not sure if it was just a gimmick or the job was for real but I don't know 450 pounds a shift is just something like fucking hell unbelievable I've got I've got one of those perfume fucking machines that it, it's just intoxicating me I have to crack open the window every time every time it bursts it just stinks I have to shut it off so yeah those are the wages so um at 17 pounds an hour you can easily get uh, 200 pounds a day without any problems it's, uh, that's LTD that's LTD I think pay UAE uh, I don't know it's but it's similar anyway so when I meant pay is great that was uh, what I meant I said it would it's almost double now don't know there are guys who commented that how can you work at 10 pounds an hour I didn't say that I don't know how how did they they, they came up came up with that so got no idea all right so last job of the day for me I was uh, I was supposed to pick up another container from here but they wouldn't serve me because it's it's closed I mean it wasn't closed but because they, they only closed at half past five and now it's almost 20 minutes past five but anyway they said no go back to model drive so yeah it is what it is just five minutes back to the yard and uh, pretty much done for the day so to stay on topic with this video will I recommend containers for new pass drivers well yeah I will but as I told you a bit earlier you will have to expect the unexpected because uh, it's not easy finding your way through uh, through all the docks they can be a bit complicated but once you go to a place uh, once you go to a uh, go to a terminal or a dock or wherever you're going to get a container it's gonna be pretty easy the second time it's gonna be piece of cake the third time so yeah a lot of waiting around a lot of sitting around um, loading and uh, unloadings take forever in some cases not all the times but most of the times I, I really enjoy uh, working on containers 
especially at um, or for a medium or large company because I did containers on uh, on smaller companies and uh, uh, because they are small companies they just keep chasing you just keep chasing that uh, wheel to be turning all the times so um, a larger company it's a bit more I would say relaxing not so many phone calls not uh, they're not stressing the driver so yeah I think that's about it guys that's it for today that's it for this video and I shall see you again on the next one till then I was Raul take care bye